Often when we talk about the brightest stars in the sky, we forget about the A-listers, Voltaire, Aldebaran and Antares. These underrated stars are certain powerhouses and in today's video we're going to be looking more closely at them. So let's get to it. So where might we find these three stars? Well first of all Altair, also known as Alpha Aquilae, is some 16.7 light years away and we can find it if we know how to find the winter triangle of Vega and Deneb and Altair. Here we can see it in the constellation of Aquila. The second star Aldebaran is slightly easier to find. What we need to do here is we use Orion's belt. Orion obviously a famous constellation with the red supergiant Betelgeuse and the blue supergiant of Rigel. We use the belt here and it points almost identically to Aldebaran. Aldebaran, it's interesting, is also known as the follower as it seems to follow the Pleiades cluster of stars. It's also known, of course, as Alpha Tauri and is some 65 light years away. And lastly, Antares. Perhaps the most famous of these three stars, Antares can be found in the southern hemisphere in the constellation of Scorpio and as we can see here it's the head of the scorpion. It's also known or was also known by the ancient Greeks as a rival to Mars because of its red colour. Antares, also known as Alpha Scorpii, is 555 light years away. So, how did we classify these stars? Well, we can see here the Sun, of course, a G-class dwarf in the centre, more or less, of the mainstream. Altair is slightly bigger at 1.79 solar masses and 1.8 to 2 solar radii, depending on how you view it. It's a much more powerful A-type main sequence star. It's white and it's also hotter than the Sun. Aldebaran is similar in mass to the Sun. As we can see, it's interesting, it's actually slightly smaller than Altair. But look at that radius, 44.13, it's a ginormous star. In fact, it's what we know as a K-type 3 giant of an orange-red colour. And finally, Antares, well, this is the, the real giant of the three, a supergiant at 11 to 14 solar masses. We're not 100% sure of the actual value. And, and the radius, of course, is much greater at 680 solar radii, so a, a much, much larger star. It's also, interesting. it has a B-class blue-white star of magnitude 5.5, known as Antares B. It orbits around 529 astronomical units from the, the huge supergiant star of Antares. And that's why, given that they're all huge stars and much more powerful than the Sun, and obviously they all begin with A, I've known them as the A-listers for the purposes of this video. Now, let's have a look at some of the brightest stars in the sky, of course. How, how did the three rank against these stars? Well, we can see the second brightest star is Sirius, obviously the brightest of all the Sun, through Canopus and Alpha Centauri. Some very famous stars here, Rigel, of course, Achenar, a bit less famous, Betelgeuse, and here they are, they rank at 13th is Alta, with a magnitude of 0.76, still extremely bright, of course. And as we move a little bit further down through Acrox, we get to Aldebaran, which is 15th on the list at magnitude 0.752, magnitude 0.95, so it's a variable star. So it could move up or down a few on the scale depending on, on the day. Likewise, uh, Antares at 16th brightest is, is 0.6 and 1.6 magnitude, so it actually gets very, very bright indeed, or very, very dim. So again, a very variable star. Okay, let's get down to business then. In our first graphic here, we can, we're going to look at closely at the star of Altair. We can see here the beautiful city of Toronto and on a spring scene in southern Canada. Uh, of course, the sun here on the left-hand side, a normal day, where slowly what we see rising is a white star that's very similar to Vega and Sirius. Here we can see it rising above the skyscrapers. Altair spins rapidly, meaning it's flattened at the poles and its rotation is just 9 hours, whereas the sun is 25 days. Here we see Toronto warming up 30, 40, 60, maybe even 80 degrees Celsius now. It's beginning to smolder and almost burn. Altair, interestingly, has been directly imaged in, in 2006 and 2007 and has a slight variability. Finally, Toronto's temperature rises to its hottest ever before the city becomes uninhabitable. Maybe under the twin stars of Altair and the Sun, only the Arctic and the Antarctic would be habitable now. 
and even for that just temporarily. So what we're going to do is now as we're always is we're going to shift the parameters somewhat. Let's add Aldebaran into the mix and instead of staying on Earth which as we can see is just really not going to be habitable we're going to move out towards Neptune. Now let's see what happens when we add Aldebaran into the mix. In the next graphic we can see the Neptunian satellite of Neri depicted Altair outshining the Sun at minus 22 which is roughly the magnitude of the Sun at planet Saturn. But wait, here we can see Aldebaran rising, a much, much brighter star. Aldebaran, interesting, is very, very slowly rotating, at only one rotation every 520 days. Here we see it shining at magnitude minus 26, the same as the Sun's brightness on planet Earth. The planet Neptune disappears into shadow, with its huge atmosphere shining in the glow. Triton on the top left-hand corner is a bit like the Moon now in, in our skies and Nereid itself is beginning to melt and has a thin atmosphere developing of oxygen and water vapour. The triple stars have certainly brought the Neptunian system to life. So we're going to change the parameters again. Obviously Neptune is probably not even habitable or may just about be habitable, but let's change the parameters and let's add the huge star of Antares into the mix. And what we're going to do is we're going to move from 30 astronomical units at Neptune out to 100 where the Voyager 1 probe now is. Let's see what Voyager 1 might see if those three stars appeared in the centre of our solar system. Here we can see at 100 astronomical units the Sun at minus 16.2 is barely visible as, as a different star now. Slowly they start appearing. Altair at minus 19.3 is roughly the brightness of the, of the Sun at planet Uranus at this point. And here we see Aldebaran, now we can see a huge disk, minus 23.34, still dimmer than the Sun at planet Earth, but much brighter than the Sun at planet Jupiter. And wait, because there's one more missing, and that's the huge supergiant star of Antares. Imagine this, the view Voyager would have. Antares now shining at minus 29 magnitudes, is far, far brighter than the Sun at planet Earth. Voyager indeed may even not survive the point at this point, but if it did, imagine the view it would have. So, obviously even at 100 astronomical units, the quadruple star system now is no use. So we're going to have to change the parameters again. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to planet Earth. But this time we're going to move the triple star system out to one light year, or 63,000 astronomical units. An enormous distance. And let's see what those stars might, might represent at that distance. Here we can see the beautiful Golden Gate Bridge in, in the city of San Francisco at one light year's distance. Here we can see slowly developing, first of all, the star of Altair. The A-class white star is magnitude minus five in the skies. And this, remember, is at one light year's distance, much brighter than the planet Venus. Aldebaran at magnitude minus nine now is outshining anything else other than the moon and the sun in our skies kind of star that we just don't have at this point, providing almost enough light to read a book by Aldebaran at magnitude minus nine at one light year, but of course Antares at one light year's distance. The disk is probably still undecipherable, although it's a bit difficult to work out the mathematics at this point, but Antares, what I can tell you is, would be magnitude minus 15 as bright as the full moon shining in the skies at one light year's distance. It's just an astronomical size of star, a fantastic achievement. And as we can see, San Francisco is that even has some light that they can read from Antares. But of course, eventually, our own star takes over at a distance of only one astronomical unit. The sun, although the weakest of the four stars we're looking at today, is our own star and as we know would provide the beautiful light that we have. Interestingly at this point the eagle star of Altair is almost disappearing in the sky just like planet Venus. At some points in the day you may be able to see it but most of the time it would be behind the clouds and not bright enough. But Antares and Aldebaran remain in the skies permanently, a permanent structure for us just to look up to. What a wonder that would be at one light year's distance. In our final graphic, we're going to get the three stars and we're going to move them even further out. In fact, we're going to move them to 4.3 light years and we're going to make them join with the Alpha Centauri system. 
Let's see what that would look like from planet Earth. Of course, the twin stars of Alpha Centauri A and B and the small star, as you can see here in the red circle of Proxima, shine at minus 0.27 magnitudes. Very bright in our skies, but Altair, now shining at minus 2.23, would become the brightest star in the sky. That is, until Aldebaran replaces it at minus 6.2, a different category of star that we don't have at this current point. And Antares, look at that, at minus 11.8, would be almost as bright as the full moon, still a few degrees less, but incredibly bright nonetheless. In fact, Antares, even at 50 light years distance, would still be the brightest star in our sky by some distance, possibly even at 100 light years, depending on dust clouds and things like that. That's why these three stars are actually A-list stars. They may not be in the top 10 brightest stars, but they're certainly worth a mention in this video and in this series. Altair, the Eagle Star, Aldebaran, Follower, and Antares, the rival to Mars, are certainly A-list stars and should not ever be ignored. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to add a like if you have, because it does help the channel grow quite a lot. You may find some of our other videos interesting, perhaps the red giant Arcturus, Capella or even Vega, maybe a, a viewpoint on a journey to the surface of Venus, or perhaps five reasons why Pluto should be a planet. Anyway, stay safe in this difficult times that we find ourselves, and I'll see you on the next one.